Terry, it's three weeks in to the day, I think I'm right in saying. How are you finding life? Yes, yeah, what I said before, it was, um, you know, it was a big shock. Uh, we had to deal with things really quickly, but, you know, with I think last week having that, that week's break from games and, and being able to have a full week's training leading into the Gillingham game, we got some real good sort of training ground minutes and hours under our belt. So from uh, from that point of view, it was really good with things settling down. As I said, the press sort of died down maybe three or four days after the sort of first announcement and then you can sort of really get on with your jobs and then you sit down, went to the, had a chat with the chairman and the owner and, um, you know, said I talked about targets and about bringing people in and it sort of all escalated from there. But basically just getting out onto the training field and, and having that time with the players and, you know, they've had to adjust to a new shape and, um, you know, along with the new faces as well, it's been, it's been good for, uh, grabbing that extra time with them. Have you, have you changed much really from, from the old regime? I think most importantly has just been the, the system of the shape um, that's changed and mm -hmm. um, getting with the sort of two strikers up top has been really important for us and creating them different angles because we've sort of been playing with um, in a formation where wide men sort of wasn't really getting there and getting crosses into the box so we've got people that have been pushing on a little bit more as in sort of full back areas and having that little bit of space with midfielders inside and with the two strikers and the one in behind them being able to sort of gamble and, and we've been able to get more men forward so from that point of view it's been pleasing because you know from the two home games that we've had you know we've had goals on the on the in the game so it's been sort of pleasing from that aspect. You seem to have created a, a, a much more relaxed atmosphere at the moment and you and, and Darren both seem sort of quite relaxed and, and you know happy with the way things are going outwardly anyway. Well no we are because it's you know we got to a situation where it was you was at the bottom so things couldn't get any worse and uh, it was a stressful time before because you know working alongside the gaffer and with the success that he's had you know he was really relentlessly making sure and every day was it, it was becoming a battle because we was trying harder and harder um, to to get ourselves out of trouble and um, you know since the change we've had to sort of encourage them to be a little bit more expressive get on the ball have more passes and just sort of like lift the the mood and the you know and, and the the atmosphere around the place because it was it was a tense place to be and you know they, they we wasn't seeing the best of them so we had to sort of change it on that view it has been changed i think we could see by you know sort of the way that the players have been training and in the games they've been trying to express themselves but when you're down there you still you know it does seem that every little minor mistake you make gets punished and um, you know, we've got to sort of cut that out but along with not sort of chastising them encouraging them and, and, and getting the work in to make sure that they're that they're putting they're putting the shift in but they're trying to play the way that we're asking to as well I mean it's noticeable to us that you seem to be spending more time on the training pitch than you were before because there was a lot of meetings and such like and you know sometimes you won't get down till 12 o'clock and is that, is that a noticeable move you've made to, to get more training time and less meeting time or? We've got more players at the moment mm. um, I mean with the injuries that we had before was horrific and we were training out there sometimes with 13 outfield players so yeah. you know I think with the new recruits that have come in we've added to the numbers people have come back fit with Granty with Diz now Nathan Ralph's back out there Adam Morgan we've sort of we've created a little bit more competition because we've actually had enough numbers to actually put a training session on so yeah, yeah. for us we've still been having the meetings um, we've still been getting out there and putting it in but it doesn't make a big difference when um, you've got numbers to work with and that was the, m the most important thing even sort of before the gaffer did leave that we was waiting for people to come back and get into the fray because you couldn't do a lot with, with the numbers that we did have. No. Um, are you happy with your new arrivals? You've brought in four or five, I think, is it? Five? Yeah. Five? Yeah. yeah. So you're yeah, no, more than happy. So um, it's tough, especially where you've got to change a, an environment and a lot of people are looking around. And the one thing I did say to everybody was that there's a clean slate for everyone. Um, people that may have been out of the team, people that have been in the team. Uh, but may not have gone so great in recent weeks and just said look 
I'm going to add a little bit of competition and uh, we brought that in the competition's getting the best out of the people that wasn't playing before and the ones that are playing now have got to step up to the mark otherwise they're going to get their positions taken and everybody's sitting on the sidelines watching mm. um, there was notable it was noticeable that I think there was four or five players that could have been on the bench wasn't and they was unhappy with that and they've trained excellently so far this week to try and get into my my plans for the weekend so mm. it's just trying to create that competition getting them out on the training field and getting the work into them and making sure that that environment is one that's fun but also competitive as well. We talked about you being relaxed and, and happy and seem to be enjoying it all. Uh, as your wife notices at home, are you still as relaxed at home as you were? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you've got to get that balance right and you've got to make sure you walk through the door when you get home and, and not be sort of moaning about the day and, and what's gone on. Yeah. And then that's your time really that you can then switch off and, and sort of try to forget about the world of football. Mm. And you know where I am at in the little village that I'm at, you can get away from it. And we've, you know, I've been purposely doing more stuff as a family, going away on Sundays and getting away and switching the phone off. So, yeah, we've been getting nicking that little bit of time as well. Um, but as everyone knows, the world of football is sort of around you 24 hours a day, and it's how you deal with it. But we think we've got, especially me personally, along with Darren, we've got a better balance to it because now. You've got the experience of doing it before, where first time round it was, you know, it was one of trepidation and thinking, cool, am I still a player? Am I not a player? Am I going to be a manager? Is this going to last for very long? And when you get that bit of experience under your belt, you know sort of how to deal with it and cope with it better. Well, that was going to be my next question. What, what do you think is different this time around from, from the last time you were the manager? Well, I think it's probably three or four hundred games being in a, a managerial process as a a first team manager and as an assistant under a manager like Gary Johnson where I learnt so much and um, and also the experience of going to a playoff getting promoted from League One and, and, and coming up against championship teams and championship uh, staff and analysis and clubs with maybe 30, 40 <coughs> million more pounds to spend than you and how you cope with that and deal with that so mm. The experiences that I've had personally along with Darren and working behind the scenes has been you know it's been invaluable to our sort of progression and the way that we want to carry on in football as well and knowing you've got that experience under your belt you can go into this sort of part of a job where people may think of it as um, I don't know a poison chalice or you know taking the impossible on we can go into it with a level head instill our philosophies and the way that we're thinking and, and try and put it in practice out on, the, on the, the first team environment out on a pitch with supporters here and that's what we've got to try and do and we're trying our hardest and as you can see we're working very hard to try and get this club safe and that's the most important thing now is this mission survival and, and showing the supporters that we're trying to do it in the right way. I know you and Darren are great friends and you know been very especially since he had his accident when they you're very very close um, are you finding that working with him on a, on a sort of day-to-day -day basis when there's more pressure, because obviously before it wasn't quite the same environment, are you mm -hmm. finding that's working well? As that really hasn't much, there's no real change in that. I think we've been the same, we argue, we, um, <laughs> we have a laugh, we scare each other, yeah. frighten the life out of each other as you just saw earlier, <laughs> when we try to walk into the office. So. <laughs> yeah. no, we still have fun, but when you're in that close proximity for you know, 24 hours a day and we spend the amount of time we spend to, together it's not often but you know we, we do argue and it's for the right reasons um, we're pretty strong characters both of us and don't always sort of agree on things but we carry the best the club's best interest at heart and everything that we do either arguing or, or going along with each other we make sure that we try and make the right decisions for the lads out there for training the preparation to then go into the football game so along with the pressure that hasn't really changed our relationship and we always said we'd never let the sort of job get in the way of our friendship so if anything really did go haywire we'd probably either walk away from the job first rather than mm. ruin, a, ruin such a good friendship. Well I'm sure on behalf of all the Oval Town fans we all wish you the best of luck the pair of you and you know hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be out of trouble in a couple of weeks. Yeah I think it may be take longer than a couple of weeks but we're all pulling in the right direction and you know, I'd like to thank the supporters as well because even in that game on Saturday, the two home games that we've had and the away games as well, there has been 
a real positive atmosphere. And the supporters, you know, even when that second goal went in, even I was, oh, you know, cursing. But they stayed behind us, you know. There was, there was an atmosphere that was still there, yeah. which had gone earlier on in the season when anything sort of went against us, that sort of, you know, that innocence that we used to have where we always thought we could score, that had left us a little bit, but it's, mm. we seem to have got it back now and the boys are responding to that, the boys are very positive and, you know, I'd like to thank the supporters for being behind us so far and knowing that, you know, they've been a big help in us, you know, getting that late winner in the first game and then also getting that equaliser so late in the in the second game at home, so big sort of thank you to them really.